won't hold back in respect of this. The fault as to where we are with this lies firmly at the feet of Keir Starmer. And frankly, he should be ashamed of himself. Uh, there are thousands of people who passed away this week from COVID, mostly our people, uh, because we've been exposed uh, through the COVID crisis and Keir Starmer has failed, in my view, to stand up for working class people through this crisis, failed to have a debate over zero COVID, failed to have a debate as to whether or not the virus is spread in schools, failed to have a debate about safe workplaces, essential work, non-essential work, failed to hold the government to account in respect of the fact that their handling of the crisis has meant that entire sectors are not viable through the crisis. And for me, I think the biggest failure right now is that we have a binary choice as to whether or not workers will pay for this crisis or whether or not wealth will pay for this crisis. And we have a leader who has abdicated that argument. Uh, and I think that that is disgraceful. Uh, I think that is reflective on him and not reflective on Jeremy. Uh, and I think the entire movement uh, should criticise him for it. If I say that uh, Keir Starmer is acting in bad faith, I will leave others to reach their presumptions as to what conversations have been had for me to reach that conclusion. Uh, but I will uh, start where we need to start, and that is whether or not Jeremy Corbyn has anything to apologise for. And I think it is important that we all reference the EHRC report and what it found. It did not find that Labour is institutionally racist. And Lucy Powell, who recently on the Politics Live show, I think it was on Thursday, whenever she was trying to justify the position that Keir Starmer has adopted over Jeremy, referenced that the EHRC report had found that Labour is institutionally racist. Well, I take offence to that. As a member of the Labour Party and as hundreds of thousands of other members of the Labour Party, including Jeremy Corbyn, who have fought against racism, experienced, in my case, sectarianism all through my childhood, I take offence at any notion that I would want to be a member of a party that is institutionally racist. It was certainly the wish of the right-wing media that the EHRC would report that Labour was institutionally racist, but that is not the finding that the EHRC report made. And what the EHRC report specifically said is that freedom of speech does not allow people to indulge themselves in unlawful speech, specifically says that, and rightly so, but then specifically says to talk about the scale of anti-Semitism within Labour is protected by freedom of speech. And it is only that that Jeremy Corbyn has done, and he has done it for very good reasons, Crispin, and I will say what those reasons are, and I've never asked Jeremy why he said it, because I think it is... Uh, blatantly obvious as to why he would say it. First of all, how can you tackle a problem of racism within any, any organisation if you cannot have a debate about the scale of that racism? It's only by understanding the scale of what you face that you can put in place what is needed to tackle racism. Secondly, we have a responsibility as a party to say to the wider public that we do not have a party full of 200,000 anti-Semites. We have a responsibility to say that we are pr about precisely what you said, Chris, about social justice, about socialism, about equality, about improving the lives for the many. And that is what we feel to our core, and it is what Jeremy Corbyn feels to his core. And he has a responsibility to say on behalf of all of us, at the, as an ex-leader of the party, that we are not full of anti-Semites. And thirdly, Jeremy Corbyn, for a period of four years, was made by the right-wing media to own every act of racism by any member of the Labour Party. He has an entitlement to defend his record as a man who fought anti-racism. He has an entitlement to say, whenever I came in to lead, lead the Labour Party, there were no systems in place to deal with mass complaints for anti-Semitism, and Ian McNichol failed to put those systems in place. He has an entitlement to point to the way people were behaving in Southside in 2017, working against a Labour government being elected in 2017. And he has an entitlement to say, I put systems in place and my office acted to try and accelerate those systems dealing with disputes. And it is that act of interference, that act of lotto saying to Southside, 
escalate, expedite these cases. It is that act that the HRC has said is unlawful, that Lotto should not intervene. Now, some of us may have a view that says, hang on a second, our rule book requires the leader's office to uphold the rules of the Labour Party, and those rules include that there should be no racists in the Labour Party, so I expect the leader to intervene. But the EHRC has decided against that. That is all that Jeremy talked about, the scale of the problem. Now, let me move on, Crispin, to the E8, to the NEC panel that was put together and has been described by, amongst others, Annalise Dodds, who should know better, as being a political panel. It was not a political panel. It was put together by the General Secretary of the Labour Party and it reflected the balance that exists on the NEC right now. But let me go further, Crispin, in respect of this. That NEC panel receives a recommendation from GLUE the Governments and Legal Compliance Department. That NEC panel sits with an independent counsel, counsel to give them advice whenever they're reaching a decision. So that panel that was balanced, that was not skewed towards the left, that had a report from GLUE and had independent counsel, decided that there was no breach of rule and Jeremy Corbyn's membership should be reinstated. That panel, which is the democratic focus of our rules of our party, deserves to have its view upheld, not undermined. Not undermined on a matter that then goes directly to double jeopardy, directly flies in the face of natural justice, is the actions that are specifically prohibited by the EHRC report, that then leave Labour open to a claim of indirect unlawful discrimination because of interference, and then exposes those NEC members to the prospect that they themselves will have to give evidence in court as to why they reached the decision that Jeremy Corbyn had not breached any rule. That is where, Ger that, where Keir Starmer has taken our party by his interference. And let me deal with the issue about the whip, Crispin. Jeremy Corbyn lost the whip because his membership had been suspended. There was no separate action taken in respect of the whip. He had an administrative suspension of his membership and as a consequence, he could not hold the whip. As soon as his membership was returned, that whip had to automatically be returned. Otherwise, the decision of the NEC was being undermined. And Crispin, where does this take us to? Well, I'll say this very clearly whenever you have the likes of Lord Adonis coming out on Twitter today telling anybody who is a Corbynite to exit the party and then you can be honest about your views. Corbynism and socialism sit as bedfellows. Anyone that wants Corbynism out of this party wants socialism out of this party. So why are we having this argument? We are having this argument because it goes to the very soul and the very principles of what Labour stand for. And we must have this argument at a moment of crisis because we cannot have an opposition that wants to go to austerity light. We cannot have an opposition that is prepared in any fashion whatsoever to see workers, pensioners, the most vulnerable of society pay for this crisis. We cannot have an opposition that will not talk about the extraordinary wealth that has been created in society and workers have not shared in it. Over 1.4 trillion pounds has been increased in the stock market since the 2008 crash. Over 580 billion pounds of wealth has gone to the top 1,000 people in this country at a time when over 400 billion pounds in real terms have been lost to workers in wages. We cannot afford to have a leadership of this party that thinks that you can abstain on the covert human surveillance bill, a bill that will legalise murder, torture and rape, a bill that will legitimise the infiltration of the trade union movement and all activism. We cannot afford to have a leadership that feels that you should wrap yourself in patriotism and you should trounce the previous leadership by calling yourself new and play to the right wing media. Because that is where we have now moved this debate to, as to whether or not we accept the narrative of the right wing media or do we uphold the democracy and the rule book of Labour? And I, Crispin, know where I stand. I accept that people such as Thelma feel so emotional about this that they must leave. My background tells me that I will be fighting. I will be fighting this leadership every step of the way. I put them on notice that on the NEC on Tuesday, I will be fighting this leadership and expecting responses. And I put them on notice 
that I will use every spare working hour that I have to support Jeremy Corbyn in his legal challenge to expose every documentation that was exchanged between Lotto and the General Secretary's Office, to expose the glue report, to expose the independent counsel advice that was given to the panel of the NEC, and I will spend every working hour I have in upholding the democracy of our party, because that is standing beside members and standing beside class issues.